So I'm just outside of Wax Tracks Record here in Las Vegas on Decatur Avenue. I'm about to head in. Here is Rich Rosen's car and showcasing his personalized license plate. Hey, Vinyl Community, this is Dr. Robert. I'm here in Las Vegas for uh, a meeting. And whenever I'm in Las Vegas, I visit uh, Wax Tracks, which is one of my favorite stores anywhere. And I'm talking to the owner, Rich Rosen. Uh, Rich is pretty famous within the vinyl community. I was just down in Phoenix uh, talking to uh, Mike Esposito at Ingrew, and I asked if he knew Wax Tracks. And he goes, oh, everybody knows Rich Rosen. So Rich is, is a, you know, well-known in the vinyl community. I'm here with him and Jerry. Jerry is his, uh, his assistant. His silent. Silent friend. partner. Silent friend. Okay, silent friend. And we've got Charlie the dog might chip in here. We, so, if, but uh, for now he's taking a rest. So, so, uh, so tell me how long you've been selling records, Rich? S 60 years. 60 years. You, you think you're going to make a go of it? <laughs> <laughs> You haven't even been upstairs or downstairs on this trip. I know. I'm sorry for that. It's a bit of a rush trip, but I might be able to get back tomorrow. So let's see. Let's see how things play out. But usually, uh, I hear that from people who are running to get away. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. You stayed late. I really appreciate it. So, yeah. So I got to tell you, and I don't know how you do it, but every time I'm in here, you've got records that I have never seen anywhere else, and most of the time, uh, most of the time, they're in pretty immaculate shape. So, uh, why, how does that happen? Is it just, I steal. is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> no, I hustle to get good stuff. You hustle to get good stuff. But I, I get a sense that people know that you're going to give them a good price and people who have records. Is it, is it Las Vegas? Is there just a lot of people with, with really fabulous collections here? Yeah. Is that well, part of it? It's old people. people you know, well, people, you know. They, it, it goes, it, you know, what goes around comes around. Well, it's an entertainment community for sure. Uh, parts of it. Yeah, parts of it. parts of it. I mean, so people that have worked in entertainment live here is what I mean. Mm -hmm. So maybe they, I don't know. I, I can't figure it out. I've been to other stores in Las Vegas, and I've never seen anything anywhere, really, uh, uh, like, like what you like, have. Uh, like, let's let's go back to a week and a half ago. Uh, a guy said he had 1,500 albums. Yeah. I went down there, he had... 5,000 albums. Well, that's a miscount. And he had, I can't believe how many Blue Notes and Prestige albums he had in, well, this, you took the, I don't know if you put it back or you took it, but you Blakey. Yeah. That came from the yeah, guy. Yeah, I think I'm buying that. And you know, the guy actually took it out of a mailer. Hmm. He never, they never opened the mailer. Hmm. The guy died and left all the records, right? Oh my goodness. He got between 600 and 1,000 jazz records. So he'd ordered it online and never opened the box. Yeah. Wow. Box. Yeah. Wow. Well, um, yeah, I don't know how you do it. Uh, what other stories can I, can I just, I'm going to flash around and show your walls here. A uh, lot of memorabilia. Obviously Rich has been in the industry for a long time. Even on the ceiling. Yeah. There you go. That's the ceiling. Uh, there's Paul, picture of Paul there. And uh, I know uh, you and Elton are friends, right? Right. Yeah, so yeah, when ten was... Ten years already. Ten years you've been friends. When was the last time he was in the store? Well, when he worked at Caesar's Palace. Does, is that... He's no longer here? No, but I... I are you... You have to see me or no? I'm coming to you. Keep talking. I got gotcha. you. Uh, I actually did an order to get... We put an order together today for Elton. He just uh, bought a bunch of albums from me. Really? So, you know, so he like, orders online from you? Yeah, like, yeah. No, I'm not online. You're not online. No, yeah, I yeah, sent right. him a list of what I think he'll like. Ah, I see. And sometimes yes, sometimes no. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. yeah, well, that's 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 a cool friendship, too. So, yeah. So, um, well, what else? What else? So what drives you to... What do you love about records that makes you want to be in the business? Okay, I've been, I've been collecting and I've been working at it for 60 years yeah so i have a collection that i keep putting into my collection is that right yeah how many records do you have of your own uh most likely a few thousand lps and over forty thousand forty fives. great googly moogly you know so like and i have a warehouse now yeah i didn't have it last time yeah i showed you pictures you of did it. you yeah. did it looks crowded you should take the picture to put it on your your shop yeah i'll do that i'll do that uh, so is that you know is that your collection or is that other records you're going to be selling 
No, no. The 40,000 is my collection. That's your collection. Yeah. But what's in the warehouse? Is that, that's not that's your... That's stuff that's got to come here sooner yeah. or later. Right, right, right. Matter of fact, I'm supposed to go Monday with my son. To, you see, we get a chance to go every two weeks or three weeks to pull some stuff out and bring it here. Right, 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 right. So, um... Well, so uh, your personal collection, what do you, is it in one room or does it flow over? Two rooms. Two rooms, two full rooms, huh? Yeah. How long have you been in Vegas, man? 25 years. 25 years. But you had a shop before out in? Pennsylvania. What city? Stroudsburg. Okay. All right. That's outside of Philly? No, it's at actually two hours from Philly. Is it? Okay. Yeah. All right. Any I place? Before that, New York. Yeah. You sound like you might have lived in New York once in a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I ran about four, four or five stores in New York. Yeah, really? Yeah. Back in the day, huh? I can't. I, I used to be on 47th Street and Lexington Avenue, hmm. a place called the World of Music. Huh. I loved the place. It was a very thin place, hmm. and uh, in the middle, when you walk in, there's a, an aisle with records on both sides, and then there's a record player where you can sample what you want to sample. Yeah, right. Would you believe that I had all the hookers in that store huh. sampling records huh. and hanging around the record player, you know? Did they buy them or you just had them there? No, they never bought them. Yeah. I couldn't kick them out. They, <laughs> they just, you know, they were there. It's part of the neighborhood. Yeah, you know? yeah. All right. Yeah. Did, it drive, did it bring in customers or? No. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just curious. They uh, just you know. hung out. Yeah. So. Got it. I got it. I'm not accusing or anything. No, uh, no, I'm just no. It's just, cool. It's yeah, cool. it's just an interview, but, man. You know, you have to take time and go upstairs and downstairs. But I think the lights are off already, right, yeah. Jeff? Yeah. I um, I can't keep you guys any longer. You guys have already been above and beyond. So, yeah. So, and I think Charlie wants to go somewhere. Well, Charlie's being very quiet. He is. He knows. Um, he knows he's got to be quiet for the yeah, interview. Yeah, he's quiet. He's yeah, playing, yeah, right? yeah, that's great. Well, I don't know when I I'll be back. say something. Yeah, tell me. I don't know what you're buying today. Yeah. I don't care what you're buying today. Okay. But what you pulled out that I looked at, you put a little, you took a little chunk out of my, 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 uh, my collection, so to speak. Your inventory. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So you're thinking I'm, I'm making a fairly decent haul. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, I you only started looking. You know, in one area. Yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You didn't get a chance to jump around. I was probably in the more uh, rare... But that's uh, not what you look for. That's what I always but look no, for. But yeah, but you always should cover cover upstairs, cover downstairs, cover... You know what? I'll just tell you this, for instance, all right? Yeah. Uh, Jerry can vouch for this. A guy came from da upstairs down here and handed me an album. He wanted to know how much. Right. I looked it up. It was $4,000. Holy crap. Just laying upstairs. Jeez. That's that album right there, the Apple. Uh, oh, I saw the that. Apple. Yeah, yeah, I saw yeah, that. $4,000. Is that what it. that goes for? Yeah. I yeah, had no idea. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, I get it. So you're saying there's some rare stuff upstairs All and downstairs. All over the place. Yeah, right, All right, over the place. right. I get it. I get that. Yeah, so, uh, no, I would, believe me, if I was able, I mean, I just, I, I looked, I don't know, I looked at what I could look at, I just, uh, you know, I, I don't have all you the have time have in the world. Much time. Yeah, I, have, yeah. I know, I gotta come back, I gotta come back, maybe tomorrow, but if not tomorrow, uh, you know, now that I'm retired, I'm gonna be out and around, so it won't be four years. Good. Yeah, Good. so. Yeah, this is the first time I'm back since COVID, man, I know it is. I look forward to seeing you again. Yeah, right. And you got to keep me informed about your back, man. I'll do everything I can for you. Oh, I don't know what you can do. You're over there. Move to Vegas, then you can do something. Well, I'm not going to do surgery, but I, you know, if I can help you I with advice. Surgery. Yeah, you, you shouldn't I have it. I'm going to die before I have to do surgery. I, I Let think... him do surgery on my corpse. That's a good plan. That's a good philosophy. I would back that Hello up. Hello to everybody out there. All right. All right. Thanks. Rich Rosen and Jerry, thanks so much. It's been a great time here hanging with you guys. You got it. Yep. So, just to give you a little bit of a sense of the interior and a lot of cool memorabilia on the walls. A lot of these are autographed photos or whatnot. You can see organization maybe not strong suit but he makes up for it in volume <laughs> yeah this is an incredible collection but yeah still going after 60 years okay
go. Now that was the answer, the shirt that you came up with later on. That was mm -hmm. the second answer. You would have gotten ten percent off, oh. right? Forever. I, I thought he did get ten percent off. Get, he didn't get no. the right answer. Oh my God, he got it. He did. He oh. did not get it. You're so tough. He said records. You're so tough. So uh, this is a conversation between uh, Rich and uh, Andrew, who I wanted to videotape a little because, uh, you know, there is sort of a resurgence of interest in vinyl among young people. And Andrew qualifies as a young person, certainly by Rich and my standards for sure. So uh, what can you tell us about how you ended up in Wax Tracks Records today, Andrew? Uh, so basically, you know, I started off like everybody else, listening to rap music, and then I kind of just like... You know, I went down the, the spiral of, <laughs> you know, listening to music, and eventually I got to, uh, eventually I got to Pink Floyd, and that's really where yeah. Pink Floyd. Yeah. Well, right now, right now I'm on Yes. Mm -hmm. Pink Floyd was the last one. Yeah. But uh, Pink Floyd really opened my eyes to, you know, this kind of this kind of music, I guess. And what do you like besides the music? What do you like about having it on vinyl as opposed to just listening to it on uh, you, online or something other digital format? So I'm a really fan. I'm I'm a big fan of owning the actual music, and I like to put my records on the wall sometimes. And yeah, I like I really like the artwork of music yeah. also. So yeah, I think that's true for virtually everybody. That uh, yeah. that you agree, Rich. Yeah, definitely. Now, with that, can you not give this gentleman a 10% discount? Too late. He's already paid. He got it in an alternate way. <laughs> he earned Remind it in an alternate next way. Time you come in, there you go. We'll give you a one, there you go. A 1% discount. A, no, I'm going to negotiate after you're gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Thanks for talking a little to us yeah, a little bit. Yeah, thanks. Hey, BC. This is Dr. Robert. Uh, you saw my video from uh las vegas i just got back and uh really enjoyed the time talking to rich rich rosen at wax tracks records and and the records i found there uh a little bit of a shout out he gave me a free bumper sticker and uh, uh i don't know i filled i think four of these bags uh with records uh there during this purchase and uh found just as always as i seem to always find at rich's store uh, just some amazing finds that you just don't see uh, anywhere else. So I thought I'd highlight several of these. I haven't even cataloged these yet or labeled them, and some of them do not have sleeves, but I'm just going to go through these really quickly uh, because it's a fairly big stack. But the first I'm going to show a, a section of jazz records. So here is a Stan Getz record. This is called The Artistry of Stan Getz. Uh, this is a, a very early 10-inch uh, record on the clef label with the David Stone Martin uh, trumpet player uh, logo. Uh, really delighted to find that, I've never seen that. This is a record I've been looking for for a while. Uh, this is the Lee Morgan Sidewinder on Blue Note. And this is the original New York Blue Note label with the RVG and the Plastilite stamp uh, in the dead wax. So a true original pressing. Uh, you don't see that often and it was one that I didn't have. Here's another record I didn't know about, Bud Powell's Moods. This is another clef pressing. It is a 12 inch. The rest of these are all 12 inch records. Uh, but uh, this is again on the same David Stone Martin black clef label and has a little uh, hype sticker down here uh, that identifies it as clef records. Uh, so this may be a second pressing. I'm not positive. I, again, I haven't cataloged these yet, uh, but that's coming coming soon. This is a cool record. Uh, also, uh, one of the early Art Blakey and Jazz Messengers records, uh, Night in Tunisia, uh, again on the original Blue Note label. And this is uh, not the uh, New York label. It predates that. This was the priciest record I bought uh, this trip, and it was not cheap, I'll just say that. But yeah, this is the West 63rd uh, address Blue Note, uh, which I think is the original, and this is also RVG stamped and Plastilite uh, P or ear logo stamped. So uh, those were the best of the jazz records I found. Uh, I found some soul records too, and 
Among those is this record, uh, Super Bad by the OJs. Um, and this is a really unusual record. I didn't know this record label. I've never heard of it. Uh, the record label is called Little Star Records. It's an LA, apparently an LA label uh, from the early 70s. And um, I think this is their first record. Again, I don't have any data on any of this stuff yet. I'm going to be uh, looking more carefully into it. Uh, but uh, in perfect, that's one in perfect shape. The cover's still in, in, um, in, um, uh, in, in plastic wrap. So uh, that was a fun one to find. Uh, added another James Brown record to my collection. Good, good twisting with James Brown and the Famous Flames. A very early King pressing. That's the black label with no crown. A mono copy. Again, in just sparkling condition for the vinyl. So that was a fun one. And this was one that uh, Rich was really... Uh, slow to want to sell me, but he finally did let me have it. And that's one of the things I will say about Rich's store. Uh, he has no pressure to sell anything. And part of it is because he, uh, you know, uh, he doesn't need to. I mean, uh, I think he, he doesn't need to financially, and he uh, is about half collector as well as dealer. So uh, he doesn't mind compiling inventory, and I think he's had some records in there that have sat there probably for years. Um, I know, I think I saw some uh, Ike and Tina Turner records that were there the last time I was there several years ago. Uh, but this uh, is on the Veep label, uh, and it's the Veep Gospel label. Uh, I don't have, I think, I think this is the first record I've ever had on that label. Uh, but uh, uh, again, a very, a very cool uh, soul record. And here's the, the last then of the Soul Records I'll show. This is uh, one of the rock and roll uh, albums, uh, series of albums that was put out on Atlantic. Uh, this is by Ruth Brown. Uh, there's one by Ray Charles. There's one by Laverne Baker. Uh, there's several others as well. And I've been kind of trying to get the series. That's one of those collector things, right? So again, I don't want to, I don't want to call out Mazzy uh, too much, but uh, that's one of the aspects of collecting for me that's not really about the music necessarily. It's about uh, completion, right? I, I mean, it's part of the bug, I got to say. So at least for me. But uh, this is a case where both coincide. I like the record and the music as much as I like uh, completing the set. And I still have at least one to go in that set. And I, uh, eventually I'll make a video showing all of them. But this was a very interesting record. Now I'm going to go into some surf music records that I found. And these are just a lot of fun. This was a very early Dick Dale record. Um, and I don't think it's probably his first record because they're kind of trading on his name. Again, I have not had a chance to look this one up online. This is on the Dubtone Records, which is, again, I, I'm pretty sure this is the first record I've ever had on the Dubtone label. Uh, and I think this is not always, or sorry, not only Dick Dale, uh, but uh, he is listed as the primary uh, artist on it. Uh, and uh, this is introducing the Hollywood surfers. Uh, so a lot of these are gonna be instrumental songs, uh, and, uh, but a very interesting find, one I didn't have. I found a couple of interesting covers uh, that I really enjoy. Uh, some of these early surfing uh, cartoons, right? So the Rat Fink, uh, here, uh, Sir Fink, uh, with Mr. Gasser and the Weirdos. That's, um, uh, I'm blanking on the name of uh, who really uh, is Mr. Gasser and the Weirdos. It's, um, somebody will tell me. It's, uh, I know he's very famous and uh, was a producer as well as uh, a musician. Uh, and this one came with a, an added a seven inch record, which was in pristine shape, uh, as well as the record itself in the original inner sleeve, uh, and it looks unplayed. That's the rainbow uh, mono uh, original label. Here's another one. Uh, I think this is a Rick Griffin cover. Uh, My Son the Surf Nut, also on Capitol. And um, this was uh, written and produced by Jack Marshall. Um, and this looks obviously it, again, this is less about the music than it is about the, the collectability of this record uh, and uh, the cool uh, cover that it came in. 
So uh, something like that. I, I love artifacts like that. And, and I'm going to buy that pretty much anytime I see something like that. So, and I'll, like I say, I'll probably do a video going forward about some of the covers and the cover art in different contexts, but for sure with uh, surfing records. And then this is the last surfing record I bought. Uh, this was a very interesting. This is a pajama party, surfer's pajama party. Again, I love that cover. Uh, this was recorded by a band called the Centurions, even though they're not credited on the front. And it says this was recorded live at the UCLA campus. And I haven't played this yet, but uh, it looks like it's a party record for sure. The back has instructions on how to uh, host and set up a pajama party, um, which was a thing. I don't think I've ever been to a pajama party. Uh, and, uh, you know, I don't feel like I, it's not something I feel like I have to do at this point, uh, but it would have been a lot of fun. And that was a popular thing, as I understand it, back in the early 60s. It certainly looks like a lot of fun. And part of the instructions are to fill a bathtub with uh, liquor and juice. And then here's a few uh, psych records I found. Uh, this is one, Simon Dupree and the Big Sound. Um, and this is one, again, I, I'm not familiar with and haven't played yet, need to look up, but caught my eye. And again, like so much, this is just in perfect shape, still in the shrink wrap. And um, this is on the tower label. Uh, and this is a stereo copy. Uh, but uh, near mint condition and you know there were a few labels uh, and tower was certainly one of them that uh, you know most of what they put out uh, is worth listening to uh, at least in the pop psych realm I found this record is an interesting one this is a British pressing of an early uh, Roy Wood and Wizard uh, album from uh, before or sorry, just after he left uh, the move. And um, this has an insert, lyric insert, that's there and perfect. This is, a again, a UK pressing on, har on the Harvest label. Uh, it does have the EMI box. I'm going to have to look to see if this is a, an original press or a repress, um, but uh, something I'd never seen, uh, Wizard Brew. And I've got... There's a U.S. copy called Wizards Brew, I think. So it's a slightly different title, and I haven't even looked to really see if that's the same uh, record or slightly variant. And then the last one I'm going to show is yet another pop psych relic. And the last time I was there, I bought a record by the Pretty Things, I think uh, SF Sorrow. Uh, but this was another very pretty, or sorry, very nice uh, copy of one of their very early records uh, called We Want Your Love. And this is a, uh, um, a pressing out of Germany uh, and a stereo pressing, uh, very early copy. And it's got to be from the late 60s. I'm sorry, a Dutch copy. And um, again, in just near mint condition, something I've never seen. It's a record I don't own. Uh, so I was happy to find that. So uh, I will say, uh, these were not cheap. Um, I kind of spent um, enough that I have been put on a short leash by my wife uh, for the rest of the year, and uh, I'm willing to abide by that. Uh, again, uh, you know, and you can look at the reviews online. I actually wrote a review of Rich's store years ago. There are, you know, it, it may not be the best store for beginner uh, collectors, beginning collectors, even though we found that interview uh, with with Andrew, um, I really enjoyed that. And he's just gotten into it and he really enjoyed that store, but the prices may uh, put some people off uh, and it, but I think what, what you don't maybe understand as a young collector is just uh, how rare the records you're seeing are and to find them there in quantity and in incredible condition uh, it just makes it a, a really uh, de desirable uh, place to shop. And I've been there uh, several times before, but I hadn't been since COVID. So it was great to get back and reestablish contact and find what I found. So until next time, the doctor's out. Take care, guys.